What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health, addiction recovery, breaking the stigma, and just trying to help improve all of our mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And as you saw, we're going to be talking about Post Malone today. Um, I have not received this many requests for a video in a long, long time. All right. So uh, yeah, some uh, some videos have been going viral of Post Malone on stage. People are worried about him being extremely drunk, really high, in a bad place, and all of that. But before we jump into that a few things. So those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Chris. I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. My substances of choice started with alcohol, then I got into prescription opioids. I've been clean and sober since June uh, 23rd, 2012. I got sober on my 27th birthday. I have worked at a drug and alcohol treatment center for a little over three years. And since getting sober, I have literally helped thousands of drug addicts and alcoholics, all right? I am currently not a licensed therapist, but I do have a lot of experience talking about drug addiction, helping people, and going through my own experience. And it is important to note, I do not know Post Malone. I kind of chuckle because I don't think you assume that, but to cover my butt, I got to make that very clear. I'm doing this video because it was highly requested, but my videos are for all of you, okay? There is a good chance, there is a good chance that you know a drug addict or an alcoholic, so I hope this video can help you help them or if anybody out there is struggling with addiction. But anyways, for the next week, um, down in the link below, I am giving away my ebook for free that I wrote a while back. It's called Caught in the Crossfire. It is how to help a loved one who is struggling with addiction, but more importantly, it's about how to keep your own mental health straight when you have a loved one struggling. So if you would like a free copy of that ebook, go ahead, click the link down in the description. It'll be in the pinned comment. And if you don't need the book, just grab a copy and give it to somebody else who might need it, all right? But anyways, let's jump into this. Like I said, there have been a bunch of videos circulating. Um, my girlfriend, my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, she first brought it to my attention because she saw it over on uh, TikTok. And yeah, here are um, a couple clips of why people are worried. So let's discuss. So, uh, like I said, I've been doing this for years and I always try to err on the side of caution when it comes to accusing somebody of being drunk or high, especially when you have no relation to him, all right? Like I know a lot of people, especially in recovery, who, who like they have this like kind of like cognitive bias of like, uh, you know, that person's drunk, that person's high and everything like that. Is he? possibly, all right? But like, unlike some of the other celebrities who are out there and everything, we don't know an exact, you know, history or recent history of them abusing substances. Uh, uh, Post Malone, he does love uh, his beer. Like he's always seen like holding a can of beer and stuff like that, but we don't know for sure. But is it possible? Absolutely, absolutely. Like, but I don't think we can necessarily know just based on that clip, okay? But what we'll, we'll see in another clip later is that he talks about uh, some of his struggles, like mentally and everything like that. But if somebody uh, is in your life who you suspect of this stuff, like if it's a child or even if it's a husband or a wife or whoever it is, like don't be afraid to drug test them. You know what I mean? Like will they get offended? Sure, you know, but if if you really try to express that you're coming from a place of concern and not like this anger, right? Like it might go 
a little bit better. But look for other signs of it. somebody in your life. Do they smell like booze? Do they have any other signs of substance abuse? Have you found any like paraphernalia? Um, do you see any track marks on their arms? Uh, do you see them like sniffing a lot? Do you see any residue around their nose? Like when I was um, using prescription pills, I was crushing them up and snorting them, all right? Next thing I wanna talk about is it's very hard to tell if a musician is drunk or high. So um, some of you don't know this, but I have been going to shows since I was a teenager, all right? I was really into the emo scene, the pop punk scene, all that stuff. I've been to so, so, so many concerts and I have seen some of my favorite artists be extremely drunk or extremely high on stage. Two that stick out in my mind um, are when I saw Alkaline Trio, Matt Skiba has a very public uh, problem with drugs and he was on stage, I think it was at the Warp Tour, and he was so messed up that he couldn't even remember uh, the lyrics and the, uh, the other singer had to jump in and take over the lead lines. Uh, I also remember going to see Cursive way back in the day and like the dude was getting progressively drunk on stage and by the end he was like barely able to stand up. I don't know if you know anybody witnessed this with Post Malone, but like the other thing we have to take into consideration, like I've seen a lot of bands where like the artist is just getting into it and like they're, I don't know, all wiggly and stuff like that. I think a great example is um, Adam from uh, Taking Back Sunday. Like I, I've seen Taking Back Sunday live like over a dozen times. But anyways, like he really gets, he really gets into it. You know what I mean? But lastly, I do understand why people are concerned about Post Malone. There have been so many deaths in the music industry, you know, a lot of people are bringing up like Lil Peep, um, Mac Miller, and those types of things break my heart. So even if people are wrong about this, I'm glad they're raising concerns and hopefully Post Malone has people in his life if this is the case, right? Like typically when it comes to artists who are dying, from this stuff, um, we also recently had uh, Juice World. Like they're surrounded by enablers, right? They're surrounded by people who just say yes, 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 keep doing drugs and everything like that. And these people are like, you know, rapping or singing about all this substance abuse. And I'm like, how come nobody intervened, right? And that's something I talk a lot about in that that book I'm offering for free, Caught in the Crossfire, is how to set up boundaries, how to have an intervention, and all these other things. Because it breaks my heart knowing that there were people around using with that person, and then they died, and then they wanna act all surprised. Like there are so many lives that could be saved, all right? But next, I wanna talk about a disgusting thing that's going, over, uh, going on over on TikTok. So just real quick, like this kind of stuff is absolutely gross, okay? And I've noticed this, like I think it was when Juice World passed away a few months ago and and people like try to do these like little conspiracy theories and everything. Like we just, like everybody like looks at Jay Station, right? And the terrible stuff he does, exploiting people like right after they die and do, doing these 3 a.m. calls. But this is like a trend. Right? This is a trend where people try to say, oh, this was predicted, their death was predicted. So seeing Post Malone struggling right now, uh, possibly struggling, and then making TikToks, trying to predict his death, so you could be like, ha ha, I did it. Like, that is absolutely gross, all right? But anyways, last night when I had more people requesting this, Post Malone was trending on Twitter, and he actually, responded to this. I'm gonna show you two clips, okay, and then we'll talk about them right after. It is, it is hard sometimes, and I just wanna say, no matter what the is going on with me physically, mentally, emotionally, being able to come out here on this stage and sing these songs with you guys means a world to me, and it saved my life every day, so thank you so much. Asking me, you know, if I'm, if I'm okay, you know, asking me if I'm on, you know, heavy drugs or anything like that. And um, I'm not on drugs and I feel the best I've ever felt in my life. Okay, so that first clip, that first clip, it's very hard to tell whether or not, because these are clearly on two different uh, nights, right? So the first one, it's hard to tell if this was before the second clip. 
I'm guessing it was, all right? But anyways, whenever I see stuff like this, um, I do get concerned. I hope they're going to therapy. I hope they're taking the time they need because a lot of people, a lot of us for our mental health, we express ourselves through different ways. Like, you know, I make videos, I write, I do so many things and it helps me get it out there. It helps me cope. And I know it helps a lot of other people. And for these musicians, they do the same thing. But that cannot be our only method of trying to improve our mental health. Right, And the, the person I think about the most when this comes up is Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park, right? Like this dude has so much pain going on and it was in his music, right? And then next thing you know, he took his own life. And this, this type of music, it helps so, so, so many people, but I always hope that the artist is taking care of themselves. Like, because a lot of times we need a support group, we need a therapist, you know, we need to be doing some kind of other work outside of that. Now, as for the second clip where he responds, and that's clearly recently, maybe last night, maybe two nights ago, whatever it is, that's the one that was going viral on Twitter last night. And everybody's like, hey, look, he said he's fine. He said he's fine. Now, again, I do not know whether or not Post Malone is high or is drunk in those previous clips, but I will say this, for any of you out there who are dealing with a drug addict or alcoholic in your life, we lie, okay? We lie a lot, all right? <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I was nearing rock bottom of my own addiction and telling everybody that I was okay, I was fine, don't worry about me, I'm the best I've ever been, and I was, you know, using more drugs than ever before. So don't don't ever take uh, uh, <laughs> an addict's word for it. Now, this is different than, you know, after they've gone to like treatment or after they've been clean for a while, because a lot of people will accuse that person after they get sober, like for months after I got sober, a lot of people accuse me of still getting drunk and high and I wasn't, you know what I mean? But just know, like, if you have someone in your life who is, you know, and you are for sure that they are drinking or abusing drugs, just know that it is common for them to lie about it. Now, typically we see the conflict between the people who are worried about them and the people who are enabling them or codependent, right? Um, for example, you see it with the fans, right? You see the fans who are just like, see, see, he's fine. Now, typically this might be a spouse, this might be a parent, we see it a lot with the parents, right? They're like, see, he said he's fine. He said he's fine, so he must be fine. You know what I mean? And this is because of uh, uh, a big fat confirmation bias, right? We don't want to believe that somebody is struggling, so we will we will find any type of evidence that they're not. All right, we we can't wrap our minds around them possibly having a problem. Like I said, I typically see this with parents, and on a subconscious level. What they're actually saying is, if my child is a drug addict or alcoholic, that makes me a bad parent, right? So they refuse to believe it. Even though, if you have a, a son or daughter who is addicted to drugs, that does not make you a bad parent. Addiction is a disease. But when we see this stuff with a celebrity, it's because fans, they get so into this parasocial relationship, they love or they respect this person or this, you know, this person's music has helped them out a lot in their life. They cannot fathom that this person is struggling and might be gone soon. So again, we don't know if that's what's going on with Post Malone, but I just want you to keep that in your mind, especially if you know somebody. But the last thing I wanna talk about in this video before I let you go is like, I know, I know social media is like where we, you know, we talk, we discuss, you know, things going on and our concerns and everything like that. But the reason I make these videos is so you look around in your own life because not many of us are going to, you know, like Post Malone isn't gonna see our like one, your one tweet and be like, you know what, it's time to get help. You know what I mean? So I, I really try to be realistic about this stuff because we focus so much on celebrities and everything like that. Like, it, 
it breaks my heart how whenever a celebrity dies of overdose or dies of, uh, from taking their own life, that's when we talk about addiction and that's when we talk about mental health awareness. We need to be talking about this stuff all the time. We cannot just limit it to when a celebrity is having a problem. There are millions and millions and millions of people around the world struggling with this stuff. So we can't limit the conversation to when somebody who's rich and famous has a problem. You know what I mean? So reach out and talk to somebody, okay? So those of you who are new to my channel, what I like to do is pull a comment from the last video and discuss a little in this video, all right? So anyways, this one is from Eve, okay? The last video was about psychedelics, just to give you some context. We were talking about psychedelics for mental health treatment and everything like that. So Eve says, it's not that bad in a therapeutic session. It's life-changing. Can't wait till it's legal and there are clinics everywhere. Yeah, and like I said, I, I think, um, you know, psychedelics should be legalized for treatment. I'm not a, ugh, I'm not this huge fan of these natural um, substances like marijuana or psychedelics that people have literally been using for thousands of years and there's this, all this red tape because the reality is, a lot of companies don't have the, the big bucks like pharmaceutical companies have to push this stuff through FDA approval, right? Like a lot of the clinical studies for like antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications, the studies are funded by those pharmaceutical companies because they make billions upon billions upon billions of dollars every year, all right? There's not some multi-billion dollar co uh, company who's, you know, making shrooms, right? And there are some theories out there, which I don't even think they're really theories. I think we pretty much know. But because of all the influence that these big pharmaceutical companies have on, you know, the FDA, have on, uh, you know, politicians, that's one of the reasons, you know, things like marijuana, things like mushrooms don't get legalized because those are things that people can just grow. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, here's my question I want you to answer down in the comments below. Do you know somebody or have you had somebody in your life struggling with addiction? What have you done to help them? Or do you have any questions about how to help them, all right? So anyways, before I let you go, don't forget, down in the description below, down in the pinned comment, there's a link to my ebook, which I am making free, caught in the crossfire. It'll be free for the next week. Make sure you go click that link below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up if you're new. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at TheRewiredSoul.com or the merch from the merch store. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.